dobry państwu. Veronika... Good afternoon. My name is Veronika Gawinska Brulikis. I represent the Janusz Kurtyka Foundation, and I have the honor to invite you to a conference entitled The Seeds of History, Polonia and the, the Polish Diaspora and Polish People Abroad as Ambassadors of Poland's Reputation. And I would like to welcome our guest today, that is uh, Dr. Lucja Mirowska Kopecz, the President of the Alliance of Polish Clubs in the USA. Hello, I would like to welcome the experts, uh, the uh, Janusz Kurtyka Foundation representatives, and all the participants, Professor Tadeusz Walsza, the winner of the first edition of the competition for Janusz Kortyka Prize for his book, Encounter with Katyn. Good afternoon, Professor. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm very happy to be once again with all of you. Mr. Paweł Kortyka, the president of the Janusz Kortyka Foundation. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. I would like to welcome all the speakers and, and our audience. Bartłomiej Chabrowski, the Canadian Polish Congress. Witam wszystkich Państwa. Cieszę się, że mogę partycypować w tej na pewno bardzo ważnej, wartościowej konferencji. Także jest z Kanady. Witam wszystkich Państwa. Hello from Canada. I would like to welcome everyone. Um, also, Tomasz Wolski, the Polish culture, uh, the, the uh, um, uh, Jan Setowski, Canadian Polish Congress, Toronto branch. Hello, everyone. Dr. Jean Sokolowski, President of PASI EDU. Hello. Yes, thank you. I, I'm, we're, we're honored here to represent PASI EDU and uh, present perhaps an American perspective. Thank you very much. Pan Tomasz Szybowski, Polska Mr. Kongres Tomasz Szybowski, the Polish Cultural Foundation in Clark. Is Tomasz with us? If not, he might be somewhat late. And the meeting shall be moderated by Daniel Pogorzelski. Hello. Good afternoon. I'm very happy to see everyone. And the Seeds of History project is financed by the Chancellor of the Prime Minister as part of the Polish Diaspora and Poles Abroad 2021 competition. Uh, the blogpress.pl is a media partner of this project. And I would like to give the floor to Mr. Daniel Pogorzelski. Thank you very much. So tonight, um, this conference is going to be a rather a free-flowing conversation and exchange of opinions on the topic of uh, how to promote the history of uh, Poland, how to take care of the good name of Poland, and what is it that we missed? Uh, what is it that we need to pay attention to? What are the opportunities, but also what are the threats? So I hope that the members of our project will have an opportunity to exchange uh, uh, viewpoints, suggestions and ideas for cooperation. And I think that there is a great need to uh, have a meeting like this. Therefore, I would like to thank you very much that we have this uh, possibility of talking in this group. I would like to thank for all the work that you do at the Janusz Kurtyka Foundation. And uh, every one of you is taking part at this meeting. Thank you very much for that. And I would like to give the floor to Mr. Professor Wolsza. Professor, over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, once again, I would like to welcome everyone most too cordially at this meeting. I do hope that this is not the last meeting. And uh, we that's actually the second one this um, year, but uh, that's the end of the year, and undoubtedly there are going to be more interesting and valuable ideas promoted by the Janusz Kurtyka Foundation next year. Tonight, I would like to talk about our history, about the history of Poland, as this is the history that we sh should not be ashamed of. And this is very important. Our history is not only beautiful, it is also very different if um, we compare it with the histories of other nations, um, the, na uh, the histories uh, that um, have uh, been blemished uh, by uh, crimes and something uh, that um, um, others are trying to conceal from the public eye. But uh, the Polish history is different. Um, in the 19th and the 20th century uh, was uh, particularly very interesting and um, um, worth speaking about. And this history is awash with the dramatic events uh, but that drama resulted in beautiful examples um, that uh, should be cherished, it should be uh, demonstrated, that should be talked about, and that should be 
presented to uh, talked about in different discussions and we can speak with pride about those events there is nothing to be ashamed of and today i would like to offer a couple of uh, topics and given the fact that our time is uh, determined um, therefore i shall not to take much time, but I simply wanted to flag a couple of uh, uh, topics and to present a couple of arguments that may be touched upon during this discussion. And I hope that this discussion is there to be continued. So it's perhaps not only today, but also in the future, we'll have an opportunity to talk about these events in the Polish diaspora, uh, for instance, and to use these arguments. So what is it that I would like to talk about today? First and foremost, I would like to, to talk about um, the way a nation can cope with the petitions because we know that the petition of the Polish state was a very dramatic event and still the statehood survived, the, the belief survived, the faith survived and also the will to fight for independence survived and also the will to have some political thought that later on resulted in independence and so that is the first uh, quite interesting uh, point for me and then I would like to move on to something that is linked with the first topic so we know that the independence was regained, but then there was a question of fight for the borders and for the protection of independence. So that is the continuation of the first topic. And um, I'm thinking about the situation of the Second Republic of uh, Poland and of the Bolshevik uh, uh, Polish War. And also I'm thinking about Roman Tomowski, Piłsudski and uh, Ignacy Paderewski, the great persons of the time. And they were, are highly recognizable all over the world. And I think that those, those persons are so important and are so great merit, not only to Poland, that they deserve to be shown to be presented um, also uh, abroad. And uh, another important uh, topic that I would like to say a few words about, those are two phenomena. First, the first of them is a unique, unprecedented uh, phenomenon, something not to be seen in other countries, um, be it in Europe or all over the world. And what I mean is uh, the Polish underground state in 1939 through 1945 the government in uh, the state in exile and that is of cap of utmost significance and uh, um something that has uh, was not done by anyone else during world war ii in occupied uh, um, europe and if we are talking about the persian underground state of course we should not uh, uh, forget about the polish state uh, abroad because the second world war did not finish the functioning of uh, the Polish government um, in exile and all those institutions that had been functioning in the period 1939-1945 and they had been established in France or in Great Britain and they were dispersed all over the world but they were still functioning and uh, nothing of the sort was done neither by the Czechs nor by the Hungarians nor by the Bulgarians nor by the Romanians and um, the governments in emigration there were a couple more than a dozen of the government in uh, exile in london but the polish government was the most important one it was number one and the activities of the authorities of the polish authorities resulted in the development of structures government structures another point um, and another topic and uh, we're going to talk about world war ii again that is the polish armed forces in the west that is a topic of uh, utmost significance, we were the fourth largest military force on the Allied side during World War II. So after the US the U and Great Britain after 1941, after the Soviet Union, but uh, larger than the French troops, because it was the Polish armed forces that were the most faithful allied to the Anglo-Saxons during World War II. And again, here we are talking about talking General Anders, General Stanis Maciek, and those are the creators of the Polish enigma, Rajewski, Zygalski, Wojcicki. Those are the Poles who, in the occupied Poland, made this beautiful gesture of uh, uh, saving the Jews from death. 
and those are the poles that um, have uh, been uh, decorated uh, with the honor of righteous among the nations uh, and again that is the contribution of uh, the uh, of uh, the poles and this is a, a very important contribution and of course uh, we still have not been able uh, to um, determine all of the names but we do know a lot and what we know shows a very clear um, evidence that we are definitely number one as far as saving the Jews in occupied Europe is concerned. Uh, another topic to talk about, it's obviously uh, uh, John Paul II, and um, he is a very much historical figure. And uh, he is our compatriot, heroic compatriot, who not, oh, who not only uh, maintained the good spirit in the Polish uh, people and um, uh, thus um, uh, the Polish people were capable of discarding the communist yoke and um, um, and gaining independence but also he traveled uh, um, around the world uh, he had more than 100 um, uh, foreign trips but he spoke about Poland he spoke well about Poland and uh, Poland is very much I identified with him associated with him uh, Poland is a heroic country on a patriotic country of honest people so Poland due to him is seen very much in a positive way and of course John Paul II uh, uh, brought in that good spirit Period, but there is uh, yet another important organization that um, had reinforced, augmented that good image of Poland around the world, and that is Solidarity, the Solidarity Trade Union, that is the largest social movement probably in the history of the world, because we're talking about 10 million strong union, we're talking about 10 million of our compatriots who at a certain point of time understood that it was so possible to change things in a peaceful way, that change was possible in a peaceful way, that, that the state could be restored, um, a different state, a non-communist state could be restored in a, non, in, a, in a peaceful way. Therefore, the trade union solidarity showed that path to other European, Central European and Eastern European people under the yoke and showed the way to freedom and the Polish way to freedom was a long one. It started in, in 1980 and uh, together with the establishment of the Solidarity Trade Union, uh, there were some other organizations before that, obviously, but let us assume that 1980 as uh, the date of the registration of the Solidarity Trade Union in court is the beginning. And, um, and um, in fact, um, we know about the events of uh, 1989, but that gave set an example to the Czechs, to the Hungarians, who based uh, on the Polish experience, and this is how they were capable of um, gaining their independence much faster. But undoubtedly, the Polish example was um, of uh, great significance, and it was not the collapse of, of the Berlin Wall, because if had there been no solidarity, but for solidarity, the wall would have been standing there. So I am not delving into details and discussions of who was the most important person in solidarity, because right now this is beyond the scope of our discussion today, but the movement matters. So the Solidarity Trade Union, 10 million people, that it that is what matters and of course people are important but uh, uh, not only uh, those some few people were determining about the mission because the entire mission turned out to be success Lech, Lech Bawensa would not um, uh, could not uh, possibly win against the communists all alone and uh, undoubtedly his um, opinions uh, uh, may be sometimes uh, shelved, uh, but as far as solidarity is concerned, there is one more important thing to talk about. So how to survive through the martial law, because that is, uh, again, yet another positive example. The Poles being tried hard uh, during uh, the World War II and uh, during the Stalinist uh, Stalinist epoch and uh, in the times of the second conspiracy that is uh, 
180,000 young Poles at that time who after the World War II did not seize their fight for freedom. So this is how the Poles learned to live in conspiracy. So that is uh, the experience of the Polish military organizations in World War II, in the beginning of World War II, also the Home Army, the Polish underground state, um, the second conspiracy after the war, gave us a really good example how to, how not to give up, not how, uh, of how not to capitulate in the time of hardships, but slowly, step by step, keep on acting and eventually win independence. And um, um, this is uh, what was happening during the martial law for many people. It was very much a dramatic course of events and some, some people picked up open fight. But then the Poles uh, assumed different tactics. Uh, that is, uh, they decided to build their structures step by step gradually. And this is how they were gradually leading to the ideals of uh, independence. And the international situation was very much conducive. That was um, uh, th that was the case um, uh, right um, before World War One, after World War One, and uh, the confluence of events helped us to regain independence. The world, the Second World War, uh, did not give us the success because we won um, the war, but we lost uh, peace and uh, we were occupied by the Soviet Union. But after, uh, but then in 1989, the international environment was conducive to us. I to wszystko, myślę, to są te najpiękniejsze przykłady, jakie można czerpać z naszej narodowej historii. From our national history. And these most beautiful examples that can be drawn from our national history are worth cherishing. Of course, you can somehow grade them because uh, there are those more important ones because you can have your ranking list and you can recognize some of them as first plane, most important ones, and you'll say they are undisputable and you need those numbers, one, two, three, and then down to 10. But you need to realize that and to acknowledge that this list will be different for every one of us. If we considered, for example, this chronological approach, I've just used it. I didn't go for significance because everyone would like or can have a different look at it, but chronologically that is what you see. All that starts in the late 18th, early 19th century when Poland is partially already um, broken. We have Kościuszko insurrection, the uprising, and that's where it starts. Then we have a whole period of partitioning of Poland, which was not wasted. When Poland was partitioned, many different ways of progressing uh, were born. Organic work, work at the foundation of the society. Patriotism is stimulated by the development of paramilitary organizations. We also have attempts at professional diplomacy. That's what Domowski does through the Polish National Committee. Then uh, Piłsudski. Piłsudski is military and uh, Paderewski and Domowski are diplomacy, national education, because without education there's nothing we could talk about because if Poles don't understand what's going on in the world, what priority tasks are, what the task number one is, that's the fight for independence, what can go to the second plane. Without that, it would be hard to rally the society to fight, to struggle. That's why I believe that a great achievement of the time of the partitioning of Poland was creation of this modern nation, as Domowski called it, a nation that can understand what the goals and purposes are on the first plane, what you need to focus your attention on, and how you need to build a powerful society, a society that would be capable of understanding that independence 
is something nobody's going to give us free of charge and that the situation we had in the 19th and early in the 20th century is something that you need to fight for. Of course, there are different ways to go fighting. It can be through uh, education, paramilitary, diplomatic, the use of uh, international circumstances. These are three paths leading to independence. When those three collided, when those three melded, this independence broke up in uh, 1918. Hence, if not in the past, it must have been three years ago when historians were considering the architects of independence, those most important included Piłsudski, Dmowski, Ignacy Paderewski, Ignacy uh, Witos, but also Ignacy Daszyński, Wojciech Korfanty, and Kazimierz Sosnikowski. So people, politicians, there was also General Haller who represented different paths, different roads leading to independence. There were those who supported armed struggle, enough to mention Piłsudski. There were also those who spoke much more about education, diplomacy, the mosque, for example. And there were those who traveled around the world and spoke beautifully about Poland, and they had specific opportunity for that. Ignacy Jan Podrewski was a fantastic pianist who knew how to play, but he played so efficiently to the hearts, to the minds of people all around the world that he was vociferous about mm, the need to have Poland resurrected. And with all his talks, all his negotiations, he won plenty of sympathy for Poland. A beautiful example that we can show without a shadow of doubt all around the world, Polish paths to independence. They are bedecked with diplomacy, armed fight, culture, education, science. So everyone will find the a very important element for themselves. But independence was not given to us forever. Then came the fight, the struggle for borders. Poland was the largest country in the world. That's not true, but that was a joke born early in the 20th century because at a press conference, a journalist asked a Polish politician what, how big Poland is. And the politician answered, Poland is the largest state in the world because uh, it has no borders. Poland has to fight for borders everywhere. In the West, Upper Silesia, Greater Poland. In the South, uh, the Czechian Silesia. In the East, Lwów. Going further north, Vilnius or Vilno. Then came the Polish Bolshevik War, conflicts with Lithuanians. So, we were in a very difficult situation because wherever we were, we fought for every little corner of Polish land. Some said that Poland would go as far as the Polish speech can be heard. And that's more or less the concept for the development of the Polish state. But Poles knew how to win Lwów, Vilnius, capture Poznań, save some land in the south in a very difficult conflict with the Czechs, who theoretically could have always been our allies, but there were border controversies. And then Poles were capable of winning this grand Polish-Bolshevik war and save peace, not only for themselves, but downright for entire Europe, because the Bolshevik aspirations reached far, perhaps up to the Pyrenees. The fire of the revolution was to be carried by the Red Army, not only to Germany and Austria. No, it was going to go further if they succeeded, even to France. Europe was tired after the First World War. And that Europe was open to 
those ideas that the communist revolution carried from Russia. And to stop that revolution was something that only Poles knew how to do. No one else could do it in 1919 or 1920. The genius of Józef Piłsudski, and first of all, the heroic attitude of all our society. Of course, I exclude here a handful of communist degenerates who wanted to subjugate Poland to Soviets and to deliver it to them as another Soviet Republic. But 98%, that's my um, assessment. Perhaps there was one, perhaps not even 1% of communists. All the others knew how to fight and wanted to fight for freedom. And then to appreciate that freedom, that independence. Let's see the grave of the unknown soldier, which was unveiled in 1925. And when the body of that uh, knight without uh, a blemish uh, was brought there, a boy who might have been 19 or 20, definitely young, although nobody knew the name when the train was coming from Lvov to Warsaw on the way, this road took it three days. It stopped at every station, at every train station in a city, but sometimes in the field. And people would approach this train, small groups of people, rural communities who wanted to touch the coffin of that stalwart soldier. They, uneducated, the ones who suddenly found themselves in independent Poland because they were Poles, because that independence was already part of their lives, but they wanted to touch the coffin of that stalwart soldier because they knew that they owe a lot to those young people. Uh, he was one of the eaglets of the Orlenta of Lvov because that was what came from a national draw. But they understood that he's one of those we need to pay the greatest homage to, then we have this tradition in the Second World War, the um, underground Polish state and the home army, the largest in Poland, plus the peasant battalions, national uh, armed forces and smaller organizations. If on top of that, we have also the Polish armed forces in the West, the, tall, the whole tally gives us the fourth allied power. And we have our tanks, we have men of war, we have airmen, and Poland not only recreated the uh, civilian authorities in emigration, but also the military one. We were the fourth greatest power. The Allies could not appreciate, they had awareness of that, but the winner was a great politics. Poland, despite of Monte Cassino, despite of Falaise, was sacrificed. Despite this fantastic attitude of Polish airmen, sailors, Tobruk, uh, General Anders' uh, path of victory, uh, capture of Wilhelmshaven by the soldiers of Stanisław Maczek's uh, armored division, despite the decoding of Enigma, the great politics uh, was uh, sacrificed because the Soviet Union was more attractive partner because they could have thousands of soldiers. Uh, and Polish capacity was just used up earlier. That was the tragic moment of this lost peace. That's how we would, should say we never uh, betrayed our allies. And there came a moment that we were the only ally for the British, uh, that the Polish airmen really passed the test, that the Polish sailors were with the Royal Navy, that General Anders uh, conducted the decided uh, attack on Monte Cassino, that General Stanisław Maczek captured the largest German uh, maritime base in Wilhelmshaven. And then we were left to fend for ourselves to the vicissitudes of fate. 
And that's the message we should share. We are a faithful ally. No one has ever been um, duped, tricked by us. And we must also say loud that to a certain moment we were guests and then we were perceived as intruders because that's how the English started to call us at a certain point in time. And that's this very important moment in our history. And here, speaking of the Second World War, I think it's the highest time to say out loud that Poe's provided, as far as it was possible, aid to Jews throughout the occupied Europe, because signals were coming from Poland to the whole world that Auschwitz-Birkenau is death factory. Reports of Jan Karski, reports of uh, Pilecki, these were and still are the documents that are defined as the most important documents of the Second World War. The world didn't want to understand it. Nobody believed the scale of German atrocities and crime committed on Jews, not only Polish Jews, but all the Jews brought to Poland from all around Europe. Those who boarded the trains of death in The Hague, in Paris, in Brussels, or in other cities, they had one-way tickets. Deutsche Bahn, the German railway, sold them tickets. That was not going free of charge. They were taking a train to the place of genocide. They had to pay for those trains. And the whole world could have learned earlier about the scale of this phenomenon if those Polish reports were given appropriate hype, appropriate momentum, if the Polish demand that it's enough to bomb the railway lines to Treblinka, to Auschwitz-Birkenau, to Majdanek in Lublin, to other uh, cities, uh, were Germans, not Nazis, because Nazi is a horrible term that's trying to reduce the scale of German crimes. No, not Nazi. Germans created death factories and where they dealt death to millions of people from all over Europe. In Auschwitz-Birkenau, not fewer than 1.1 million. In Treblinka, no fewer than 850,000. In the remaining camps, the number of those murdered was counted in thousands. And one needs to discuss it, to speak out loud about it, so that those who don't know the history of Poland, and honestly speaking, the history of Poland is very infrequently present in the history books of various European and world countries. But we need to mention that so that the information about Polish concentration camps doesn't come back because they were founded in Poland. People don't understand that somebody, an alien could do it. They don't know history. They don't know that Poland at the time was occupied and that those camps were created, were founded by Germans. We also need to speak loud about deportations of Poland, of Poles to the East, Soviet lagers, 1.5 million people, innocent, who were taken to Siberia only because they were Polish, a very important subject. And I believe that it should also be a leading subject, as it is important for the current historical politics practiced by the German Federal Republic, by the Russian Federation, that are slowly pushing to the margin the responsibility for those events. Not only for cutting that we discussed two weeks ago, not only for deportations, but they want to whitewash themselves in the eyes of public opinion and to show that they were states that had nothing to do with the crimes. And Stalin was that good uncle who brought freedom and independence to Europe after conquering the Nazi Germany. 
Let's now pass on to post-war events. Here, yes, we had this clandestine work again, the underground uh, activity. Many countries can't believe it. How could you have underground activity after the Second World War? There was none in France, US, UK, Belgium, the Netherlands, there was none. And Poles work underground. It turns out that it was necessary because, as I said, Poland won the war, but it lost peace. We were again in such circumstances that forced us to fight against communists. Hence this second underground part. Improbable, but this is characteristic of Central and Eastern Europe. The development of this second underground movement was greatest in Poland, somewhat smaller in Lithuania. And you had traces of that in Czechoslovakia, Hungary. These were the states where the democratic opposition, this clandestine state, was clamoring loudly for freedom. A subject that can raise your brows, but just because this is the continuation of this wartime home army uh, underground secret state, you can easily pass on to this subject and discuss it. Speak out loud about it. There's nothing to be ashamed when we're talking that we keep on thinking about the path leading to the absolute independence and we want to get rid of Soviet presence in our land. That's something that would be possible only 45 years later, but that process began in 1945, back in 1945, yes. Then we had the bright figure of John Paul II. I believe that this was God helping us, giving us such a great pole. A man who woke up the conscience of the whole world and also inspired hope into our nation. And at some point of time, after all those uh, uprisings, uh, the Bosnia 1956, I'm going to use my own uh, notions for those events, for some of those events, because some of those events should be called uprisings. What happened in June 1956 in Bosnia? It was an uprising. What happened in December um, 70, 1970 on the coast was a, another uprising. And... Uh, Due to the shortness of time, I could not um, explain why I call those events uprising, but this is how I see those. And after those failed attempts in 1956 and then in 1970, and after the students' protests in 1968, and uh, after the protests in 1976 in Radom at Ursus and uh, in Płock, John Paul the second uh, in 1978 gave a new, gave new hope for freedom to Poles and hence the free trade union, hence uh, more anti-communist organizations and pro-democracy organizations and hence we saw the reawakening of um, uh, the Polish minds and consciousness and the magnificent um, solidarity movement that um, united 10 million people. None other country in Europe, in Central Europe, Central Eastern Europe, none other country had a country like that. It was not just a trade union. It was not a trade union per se. It was a social movement and it was the movement of people dreaming of uh, independence. And of course, there were many different people, many different representatives of Polish society in that movement. Some of them authentically had been fighting for freedom at the Corridor and the Free um, Trade Unions, so also the students' organizations beginning with the 1950s so, or at the KPN with the drop and so on and so forth. So there were many people who were very much engaged in that fight for independence, but there were also many people who had a different, a different pedigree. They used to be the people of the of um, the Democratic Union, of the PACs, of uh, the Workers' Party, and so on and so forth. 
and everyone had the right to change their views, the points of views. And so that was a mass unique movement. And uh, within and apart uh, from purely trade union type of um, activities, uh, they were also engaged in political work and solidarity was uh, aiming at um, building new Poland. And uh, once we connect John Paul II with the ideas of the solidarity movement and with the activities of the solidarity, again, we come up with a beautiful topic, a unique topic, unprecedented topic, and uh, no one can boast having both John, uh, a Pope and solidarity at the same time. And because in other countries, we did have some anti-communist organizations, but uh, the numbers were much lower and, um, um, and they were just going perhaps in 2000s or hundreds, but here we have 10 million people, 10 million people who were determined, almost all of them, to march towards New Poland. And then there was the martial law. The martial law, which was a dramatic experience for the Poles, um, the martial law, the, not only the military council of um, um, introduced um, the rigor and the regime and was posing threat to human life, but um, those were empty shells in the shops also that uh, was uh, a complete stifling um, scientific, cultural, artistic life. Uh, Poland was closed to the entire world. People could not leave Poland. Um, we could not. Um, the only movies that could be featured in uh, c cinema theaters were Russian movies, uh, but uh, the Western world uh, was non -pre not present here. So that uh, was actually pushing Poland backwards, just like in the Stalin's days. So, so in fact, um, in fact, uh, the Polish under the martial law was very much reminiscent of the Stalinist Poland. But the Poles did not capitulate. They found their way, and gradually they were recreating their underground structures. And um, by the end of the 1980s, when the communist authorities once again were compromised, uh, all of uh, that uh, had led to yet another upheaval for independence. Uh, it was not that strong, but the situation did change because the communists had to share their power. And they did not do it because of their own good free will. They didn't have any other way out. That was the only option for them under the circumstances. And they actually benefited on it because uh, had there been another solution, then practically speaking, the wind of history would have blown them away from the political life. But here, the communists, had, they unfortunately had that great idea, it was their great idea that power had to be shared because they said that once we share power, it means we still would rule for some time. We would still rule solidarity for some time to come. And then we would get rid of the solidarity movement. But that second part did not work for them because um, the events uh, unfolded in a different way. And uh, yes, there was that point of time in our history when the uh, Polish United Workers' Party became an outdated party, something completely unacceptable, both for society, but also unacceptable for the party activists themselves. So they themselves understood that the party had no reason to be. And so they started uh, creating new structures and uh, of course, on the basis of uh, their old experiences, but still th they were no longer a political force number one. And that was, was something that definitely ended, concluded the worst period in the post-war Poland that started after 1945 and ended at the time when Jan Olszewski, Prime Minister, started um, establishing the first government. Um, it was uh, on the basis of the first democratic election because the elections in 1989, those elections uh, were tainted uh, with um, all sorts of uh, dealings with nationalists, uh, and uh, they were not really reminiscent of the free elections in uh, free Europe or in the United States of America. But Jan Olszewski 
was uh, shaping his government on the uh, basis of the first truly fully uh, democratic elections. And this is something that needs uh, to be talked about clearly, because I think that this is a very good element of uh, our national history. Because this is how we can actually combine the victory of um, the Polish society. We were victorious uh, over the martial law because this is how we could actually describe it. So to, in the briefest of the brief, this is how we can name it. And uh, just um, think in 1980, on the 13th of December 1981, that was the beginning of the martial law, but the full victory, the full success or partial success was in, in 89, 1989, the full success was as late in as uh, 1991, that is 10 years uh, later. That was a long path to independence, but it actually did happen. I know that I have uh, been speaking all too long, I have to conclude, but uh, given the topic and given the timeline, we're talking about the timeline of two centuries with so many events, it would be very difficult for me to limit myself within 20 minutes, so I do apologize for being so long with my lecture, but I do hope that what I have said will give us an opportunity uh, to start uh, a multifaceted discussion. So thank you very much, and I am at your service. Thank you very much. Professor, I am very, very much impressed uh, not only by the level of your knowledge, the way you shared that knowledge with us, but also would like to thank you very much. And, uh, and uh, as we are talking uh, today, uh, of course, uh, this meeting is possible due to technology. And uh, I would like to thank the Janusz Kurtyka Foundation very much. And I would like to avail of this opportunity and would like to give the floor to Mr. Pavel Kurtyka, who would uh, share with us uh, his thoughts, because it is due to the Janusz Kurtyka Foundation that we can meet and that we can listen to Professor Volsha. So uh, you would if uh, who in such a, I would say poetic way, very much moving way, was talking about our history. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Professor, I would like to thank you for this uh, very broad introduction into our discussion and the topic that we um, ask the professor to talk about. This is not a, um, a coincidental topic and my contribution. will um, be such that I will try to put uh, uh, some things in a certain perspective. Uh, the Janusz Kurtyka Foundation, as you know very well, in the second half of um, 2021, started in cooperation with the Chancellor, with the Prime Minister, the project under the title The Seeds of History. And the main goal, the most important goal of this uh, project is to create um, a platform that would rather be loosely connected by the platform of cooperation um, in order to promote Polish history in the United States of America and in Canada. So that would be the platform of coordinating activities, different activities within the organizations with the Polish diaspora organizations. And you represent at this meeting a variety of uh, Polish diaspora organizations. And of course, I'm very grateful to you as the president of the board of the foundation. I would like to thank you for having accepted um, the an invitation to take part in the Seeds of uh, History project and for taking part in this meeting. So we, as the foundation, we are at your surface as uh, we deliver some material. And um, this material is being developed uh, as a part of our statutory mission. And Professor is, uh, in the best sense of this word, uh, the, the, the professor gave us this material, so to speak, as, because this is uh, how we can organize such meetings and lectures uh, and talks. And of course, um, we also deliver some literature and um, 
um, historical uh, books uh, that are published by the Janus Kritika Foundation. And uh, also, this is how we are trying uh, to shape the agenda of matters that we're talking about, something that Professor spoke about. But as you can see, we are also dealing with a very painstaking and meticulous process of translating this literature. So we are in fact popularizing Polish science and make it uh, uh, more accessible all over the world uh, and uh, a very important market from the from the point of view of the global network of uh, inflows and outflows. Of course, the, the United States of America are very much influential and Canada is also is um, the center of the um, Atlantic civilization, which Northern America is. So we see and we observe in our foundation, and that was uh, the direct uh, cause for us to start this project. We saw that uh, our international environment uh, was deteriorating from the point of view of security. Most probably you saw that we saw uh, the publication of a document by on the web pages of the Russian government, and uh, there they um, are diplomatically are uh, being provocative with regard to the West and uh, NATO EU member states, and they are trying to establish uh, new zones of spheres of influence. So we see that the Russians uh, uh, presume uh, the withdrawal of US uh, troops and NATO troops uh, from the territories of Central Eastern European states, also from the territory of Poland which would mean that the Republic of Poland uh, would be a second category NATO member state. So as we're talking about hard diplomacy and, um, um, and, and military uh, diplomacy, then of course we might think, um, what has it got in common with history? But if we know our past, if we know our history, then for thousands of years, in diplomacy games, um, 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 there were always uh, causes being found to, to declare wars and to press claims, uh, but also history shapes the image of countries and, na and nations. And recently, in the recent years, and you're probably observing that, we have uh, been dealing with the defamation campaign against Poland. The objective is uh, to uh, to attribute the Poles uh, with uh, some labels that are based on semi-truths, uh, for instance. Uh, one of such labels is that allegedly the Poles were um, also taking part in the Holocaust. Um, and um, Professor is um, setting up vectors in a different way today. The Professor shows that we, the Poles, uh, are very much the ambassadors of the Republic of Poland in the good sense of uh, that notion that we want the world to see us on our good side so that the world sees uh, the events and the processes that we are proud of. And this is why we ask Professor Wolscher to select um, a number of um, events that are so very much important from the point of view of our memory. So he spoke about such events and such processes that um, give us an opportunity to understand Poland better. That is to say, if you want to learn about Poland, let me tell you about some points in our history that will explain why Poland is so important and why is it worth knowing the history of Poland and why is it worth being interested in this part of um, um, of the world. And let me get back to return to um, the diplomacy um, topic. So first, uh, we see that um, the Russians uh, are uh, being more and more uh, challenging and um, 
and we think there will be we will see more of that um, in uh, how they are going to use uh, their diplomatic channels to affect uh, the image of Poland. But we have to define our past uh, through the prism of facts and research done also by the Polish scientists. So we, as the Poles, could not allow the world to swallow this um, deceitful propaganda which presents uh, Poland uh, in uh, the untruthful uh, light or is marginalizing Poland. And we need to speak vociferously about the events that, that do matter. So this uh, meeting and this project is a part and parcel of a greater flow of work that needs to be done. So the Seeds of History is the project in which we all take part in the today's debate has the objective of inspiring each other within this uh, free conversation. And uh, just like Professor Volsha has just spoken, we need to talk about what we need, what you actually need as the Polish diaspora, because you represent the Polish character in Northern America. So that somehow there's best events from the Polish history could be presented in your everyday life, in your everyday activities, so that you could also take part in co-shaping the image of Poland in Northern America. And I see my role as uh, of the person who needs to listen to you. We need to see how you define the situation in your countries. We need to see your observations uh, so that we understand better what needs to be done to be more effective. So this is my personal question to you. And this is the question that I would like to address to you. So I do hope that this inspiration that has been shared by Professor Walsha and the inspiration that he had contributed into our minds, we I do hope that this inspiration will uh, will would uh, also inspire you to take part in this discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I could say, Pavel, that our seeds sprout, and we can see it. Thanks to you, thanks to the Foundation, thanks to Professor Volsha. And now, especially at the beginning of the panel, I always tell people, a boy from Yatskov, I'm local, I come from here, I was born here. So I want to ask Dr. Wutsia, Dr. Mirovska Kopecz, the first panelist, she is someone who is so active in Polonia here. It's worth to mention that the foundation that educates here, Mirowska Kopecz, for a time until recently, has been the only director of a public school in Chicago. And all the time, she also saw to all her patriotic initiatives so I have plenty of respect for her, and I suggest that we start from her, the president of Danielu, the Polish Club. Thank you very much, bardzo. Daniel. I'm really moved, uh, but I'm trying to go on. Distinguished Professor Professor for this very clear explanation of the most important historical facts that show our Polish history that is being and has been so horribly falsified by various forces in this world. In this panel and also in the panel two weeks ago, just to explain, I'd like to emphasize that I'm by no means a historian, and I don't Natomiast, tak jak podkreślił Daniel, 
zainteresowanie, jestem praktykiem działalności społecznej i z ogromną pokorą uczestniczę w dzisiejszym panelu. Jako działacz polonijny chcę podzielić się z Państwem pewnymi przemyśleniami, które oparte są na obserwacji tego, co dzieje się w środowisku polonijnym, a także może zasugerowaniu pewnych The Polish diaspora, that is, and and also perhaps suggest certain initiatives that could be helpful in developing the good name of Poland, of promoting our history here in the US, but it's also something that certainly needs to be done all over the world. We are so very glad that Janusz Kurtyka Foundation turned to Polonia organizations and właśnie tego dobrego imienia Polski, bo tak naprawdę z tego, co ja obserwuję, to do tej pory jesteśmy traktowani jako tacy programatorzy, propagatorzy programu, przepraszam, że tak kolokwialnie powiem, jeść, tańczy i śpiewa, bo tak naprawdę głównie to w takim kontekście pokazywana jest Polonia amerykańska, w szczególności Polonia chicagowska. A prawdą, prawdą jest to, że na dzień dzisiejszy mamy przeogromną bazę intelektualną w szczególności w młodym pokoleniu, tak jak Daniel, który aktualnie ubiega się o bardzo ważną funkcję we władzach tutaj stanowych, muszę powiedzieć. I bardzo to cieszy, że, że mamy tak świetnie wykształconą młodzież. Młodzież, która zajmuje bardzo znaczące stanowiska zawodowe, ale także i społeczne. Myślę, że z tej bazy intelektualnej powinniśmy korzystać w tym celu, by właśnie w języku angielskim, którym musimy funkcjonować, bo tak naprawdę my jako Polonia Dużo mówimy, dużo robimy w naszym środowisku, w środowisku polonijnym, ale chyba czas jest na to, żeby wyjść do środowiska amerykańskiego, korzystając z naszej bazy intelektualnej, która świetnie posługuje się językiem angielskim i żeby właśnie tę, przepraszam, tak powiem, dobrą nowinę o, o nas, o Polsce, o Polonii nieść w środowisko w pojęciu tym jak najbardziej szerszym. Jaki, jaki jest nasz stan jeśli chodzi o, o historię. Na pewno szkoły polonijne w fantastyczny sposób uczą historii i wyrabiają te uczucia patriotyczne w młodzieży polonijnej, ale jakby nie ma tej kontynuacji po tym, kiedy dzieci skończą, czy młodzież skończy szkoły średnie i co dalej się dzieje. Mamy organizacje polonijne takie, Oczywiście będę mówiła o Związku Klubów Polskich, który, pod, pod którego auspicjami powstał pomnik katyński, tablica smoleńska, kiedy właśnie 10 kwietnia i 17 września pod pomnikiem odbywają się takie dwie największe patriotyczne uroczystości polonijne, ale także zapraszamy Amerykanów na, na te uroczystości, żeby pokazać, so o co to właściwie chodzi, dla, dlaczego mamy ten pomnik katyński, dlaczego jest about, ta blisa smoleńska, dlaczego czcimy 17 września, o co tak naprawdę chodzi w tej naszej historii. W Związku Klubów Polskich organizujemy dożynki, które nie tylko pokazują tę społeczną część, czy kulturalną część, obyczajową część dożynek, ale także dożynki rozpoczyna Teatr Ludowy Rzepicha, pokazując ważne rocznice historyczne właśnie przed rozpoczęciem dożynek i jak część... Mamy największe wydarzenie polonijne, jakim jak jest Parada Dnia Konstytucji 3 maja. 
the parade of the Constitution Day on the 3rd of May, with participation of 20, 30,000 people, while in the last two years, of course, the parade could not have been organized. We organized virtual parades, and this year's parade attracted virtually, obviously, more than 40,000 people, so 40,000 online visitors. So this is some message of spread to the world. I believe it's a very important thing, and that's a good starting point for us to be able to do something more, to be able to work on that good name of Poland and to show the true face of our history. What do I believe to be most important, most significant, that we as Polonia start working together. I'm very glad that we have representatives of Canadian Polonia here, that we have also representatives from New York, as far as I understand. And this is the point where we should work out some line for cooperation. I hope that with Pavo, the Kurtyka Foundation could play a fantastic role in that unification of us and leading us in a joint direction. Because as of today, and I'm very sorry to say that, for Polonia to speak in one voice, that would really be Cudu dokonać, jeżeli, so jeżeli ktoś nas jakoś e, could, doprowadzi do tego, że, że zaczniemy współpracować ze, ze sobą, wykorzystując e, naszą bazę intelektualną w młodym pokoleniu, że będziemy korzystać z tego, że znamy e, właściwie wszyscy doskonale język angielski i będziemy mogli e, to wszystko przełożyć także na środowisko angielskojęzyczne, czy into the English-speaking world, be it in Canada, be it in Poland, be it in the US, but perhaps why not worldwide as well. That would be fantastic if we use the materials that you've already sent to us. Perhaps there will be some others that we'll be able to share ze środowiskiem angielskojęzycznym. My tutaj z naszej strony oczywiście te wszystkie materiały dzielimy się tymi materiałami z Polonusami, którzy już może nie mówią po polsku, ale zainteresowani są tym, żeby pełnić funkcję tych ambasadorów. Wydaje mi się też, że bardzo ważne są te inicjatywy oddolne, w których ci ambasadorzy będą in which all those ambassadors would be involved addressing the Americans and presenting our history. But what you certainly need is this mass action, mass activity of whole Polonia. This is where I address the Kurtyka Foundation leaders and we are ready for action. I would like to impinge to follow on your time. That's what I've had to say. Thank you very much for giving me the floor once again. And Professor and Pavel, thank you very much for being here together today. Perhaps there aren't so many participants in the panel, but once this is on YouTube and Facebook, I believe there will be more people to learn about what we've discussed today, and we will reach larger numbers of people. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. I must say that it's always a pleasure to be listening to you. And as we all know, this is something really fantastic. So I'm asking the next gentleman, if you could perhaps share your comments. Good afternoon, good evening, welcome everyone. I'm so thankful for being invited. And it's very good that I can still hear some extra sounds. Can you hear me well? Bartłomiej, if you tak, przepraszam bardzo, i wyciszam. Your microphone off. Done. Thank you very much for that invitation, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. It's good that 
Kurtyka Foundation has addressed this problem. And I believe I have made a certain contribution to that. This year I spent two months in Poland and at uh, the Chancellery of the President of the, the Republic of Poland, we discussed some things and the defense of the good name of Poles is something I've done for 20 years. I actually uh, ran the committee for the defense of good name of Poles. At that time, this was the time of the government of civil platform. And as we had somewhat different opinion on certain subjects, especially concerning Volenia and the late Professor Lech Kaczynski, I was even uh, attacked for misconducting that commission. It's just to show you how very topical those subjects are in Poland. Thank you very much, Professor, for your lecture, for this introduction. I've seen your previous lecture, the one of the 4th December, concerning the cutting issues. So just some um, words. We're in Toronto, and Toronto is the place where the first cutting memorial was built on, on public ground, because the real first was built in London, but it was within a cemetery, while ours was in public land in 1980, with a lot of protestation from the Soviet embassy and still Polish embassy as well. And then in 2011, after all the efforts here in Toronto on this public ground, also, the Smolensk obelisk was built, commemorating our compatriots who died at Smolensk. That's just an introduction. Other than that, the foundation and the late Janusz Kurtyka were connected to the Toronto uh, branch of Canadian Polonia, which I represent here. The, the, there were connections. And we exchanged letters about the crimes on Poles perpetrated in the region of Vilnius and Novogrodok. So in the area of today's Belarus and Lithuania, about the crimes from the time of Second World War. Naliboki and Konyuchy were the names of locations. And by the initiative of the Congress, investigations were started. And at the time, Professor Kurtyka was the head of the Institute of National Remembrance. We even exchanged letters. The professor was supposed to visit us. What happened did happen. We all know what. And there have been some spiritual ties, at least, between us. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if I could uh, give you a word of introduction because we've dealt with these matters for quite a long time in Toronto. The Committee for Defense of Good Name of Poland Poles, uh, was set up in the 1990s when the local press quite often used those uh, this mental shorthand, which is still present in the media, Polish concentration camps, namely. One of the papers, which is very popular here, would present such terms and we rallied at the time. There was a big uh, demonstration at the Toronto Star publishing house. And the effect was that something finally changed and plenty of polls simply refused or discontinued subscription of Toronto Star. That's how it all started. And we continue this. And in these years, we mostly focus on what is broadly understood as promotion of the Polish achievements and achievements of Poles, and we can systemize all those matters a bit. Outside Poland, you often say that there are nearly 20 million people who acknowledge their Polish roots. So those are our compatriots. and. Um, 
it's uh, worth noting that this is a powerful force. And uh, also, we should uh, see that many times those are people who have attained a certain level. That is uh, both the material and intellectual level and uh, the uh, communities where they live. And uh, this is a, a remarkable potential that um, is not fully used and uh, it could have been better coordinated and um, and we lack this coordination about the, among the Polish diaspora and those Poles who live uh, along the Vistula River. So as um, for the image of um, uh, the Poles and the Polish diaspora, there are three groups. At first, we're trying to promote the contribution of uh, the Poles and the civilizational development of the world, and this is our global presence. And here we can mention a number of great names. Not a, not a Ben, many times those were Poles who emigrated to, uh, from Poland um, after uprisings, and there were uh, uh, large groups after the November uprising, January um, uprising, but it's not the time to, to, to uh, speak about those uh, particular events, but that's worth mentioning. And another um, element that we deal with uh, is um, telling the truth about the Polish history and the uh, fighting um, lies um, about uh, the Polish history. And we are talking about the history of, uh, of the Poles and the history of Poland during World War II and after World War II. And many times uh, um, if there was so much uh, deceitful information also in the West and uh, also in, in the official um, curriculum um, of uh, education, as far as educational uh, um, um, system is concerned here in the West, many times World War II is considered to begin with the attack on Pearl Harbor and not with the attack on Poland uh, by Nazi Germany and by the Soviet Union. And the third element uh, that uh, we're dealing with, uh, that is uh, the defense of the good name of the Poles and the Polish diaspora and of Poland. And uh, yes, we know uh, um, some people use this absurd notion of the so-called Polish concentration camps, and we know that the Minister of Foreign Affairs is dealing with that uh, problem, but still we have those uh, absurd statements. And two or three years ago, in one of the university publications here, um, they were speaking of um, the Polish SS, uh, um, that is at uh, the um, the Białystok uh, ghetto operation. So we see that uh, sometimes uh, there are some false informations that are still present uh, in the media space. And uh, so we're trying to see what is it that uh, is the essence of the Polish diaspora organizations. And the Polish diaspora organizations are there to um, keep up the Polish identity abroad and uh, for those who um, live abroad. and. Uh, uh, what is identity? It's the language, it's the culture, it's the faith, it's our history specifically, and also those are the matters that are related to our past. And uh, generally speaking, it's also about um, taking care of the Polish raison d'être and of the good name of the Poles. And uh, I wanted to speak somewhat longer, but I'll try to uh, speak a bit um, shorter. Uh, perhaps we should think together, maybe we should better utilize the already existing channels so as uh, to move on with these historical matters, because it's actually uh, is the remit of the um, um, of the political uh, history, historical policy of the Polish state. And perhaps we need to um, to uh, take some action as this gives uh, us a, a more influence uh, through our democratic process in the countries that we live. And I think that uh, together we can do things together. And this is how we can shape proper narrative on um, uh, the historical policy um, about the Polish state. And uh, perhaps we should somehow systematize um, this uh, narrative and set up uh, priorities. Because many times in this uh, 
in the space, within the space of for the Polish diaspora organizations, many times, many organizations deal, uh, eagerly, eagerly deal with uh, Copernicus, Kostiuszka, and so on and so forth. And of course, they are very significant, they are very important. But nevertheless, um, we know uh, that history is about the past, but we live today in the present. Uh, and uh, perhaps uh, we should uh, operate uh, and also operate in the modern space. Uh, and of course, and one of the most important problems that we're dealing uh, today with, those are the matters that are related to World War II, and uh, in particular, Polish-Jewish relations. And uh, um, there is um, uh, nothing to conceal that uh, Mr. Gross's narrative or Mr. Grabowski's narrative in Canada or in Poland to Barbara Engelking present her narrative, presents narrative and they have an impact on how Polish society is perceived in the West. And uh, I uh, think that this is our common lesson that we, uh, that's our homework that we need to do together. And I have been appealing uh, for that for many years in cooperation with the Institute of National Remembrance. We need to have access to some uh, set of materials. So luckily, the, um, um, the latest publication by the IPN um, they also address um, uh, the narrative uh, by Mr. Gross and uh, uh, Mrs. Engelgrim and Tomasz Romanski also presented his material. And I think that those are the publications, um, the type of publications that need to be translated into the English language and they should be um, um, disseminated here in the West. Um, and uh, of course, it is not to say that we should not deal with the matters of the Polish history, because this is what actually does shape the image of Poles and Poland, but we need to set our priorities in such a way so that we can react to the problems, respond to the problems that arise today. And uh, another important issue that I personally have problems with that is that in the Western mass media, Poland is um, presented as a non-democratic country today, as a country where on the 11th of November, we have fascist and uh, nationalists uh, um, on the streets in uh, Poland. And this is where we could do something together so as uh, to change this image and to show that uh, those are Polish patriots, that uh, it's got nothing in common with uh, nationalism. And I personally see that in conjunction with an unpleasant situation, um, uh, with a rather unpleasant situation, uh, um, Polish situation in the EU, because right now Poland is fighting for this sovereignty, proper sovereignty in Europe. And if we totally yield to um, the European recommendations, we will uh, disappear in this multiculturalism. And the, we have examples of that here in Canada. This is, this is a multicultural society and God forbid um, to think about the time when uh, some will have uh, to, uh, to, um, to present his or her point of view on one or, that, uh, one or the other side, and people will have problems with identification. I could say so much more, but I would like to thank you for this invitation. And my appeal is, I appeal to you, let us unite forces. Let us use the foundation uh, for coordination purposes and uh, with your permission. And uh, with those of you who would like, to take, would like to take part in it, I do believe that we need to set a list of priorities. Because even we need to think about publications. There are so many publications today that may be um, uh, promoted because um, they do respond, they do address many different issues. Of course, we should not forget about matters of history. And so this is my main message. My, my main message. Thank you very much, Mr. Zetowski. And here we have uh, many people who actually speak English. And so let me just, uh, should I just change the English because I'm going to speak English right now. And I would like to introduce Mr. Jinsukolovsky. But 
Before I do so, for the uh, Polish listeners, I just would like to say a few words about Mr. Sokolowski because he is quite an interesting person. He emigrated uh, on the law, on uh, the Displayed Persons Act, and his uh, father went uh, through four uh, German concentration camps, and he grew up in a Swedish uh, Christian uh, home. He was uh, a professional career officer dealing um, at, at Air Force, and once retired, he worked as a system analyst at uh, Northern Grump, and then he worked uh, as a telecom communication specialist with the federal government. He has undergraduate degrees in mathematics and German, graduate degrees in systems management and science and technology policy, and a doctorate in public policy. Um, and uh, he also um, is, uh, and also he uh, is a graduate of the Allied of the International um, uh, School of George Washington University and the Doctor of Humanist uh, Studies at uh, the Public uh, Policy School at the George Mason University. So let me switch to English now. Yes, thank you. Uh, so, Dr. Sokolowski, what an honor! have you here with us. Would you be so kind and share with us your thoughts uh, about the lecture, about how we can better engage the Polish community, whether it's in the United States or in Canada? Sure, thank you very much. I would like to express my appreciation to Mr. Kurtyka uh, for this opportunity to present uh, on behalf of our organization, PASI EDU, Polish American Strategic Initiative Education Organization. And also to express on behalf of uh, PASI EDU to <clears throat> Professor Volsh, uh, extraordinary uh, lecture, uh, highly informative, very compelling. Um, I took six pages of notes, so <laughs> that should tell you something, but uh, I submit that the positive acts of courage, honor, and integrity that uh, Professor Volsh pointed out, these, these do define Poland's uh, history. Uh, it confirms its good name. And I think also I would say, I would go on to say that it represents, I think the essence of the, the Polish people. One of the uh, proposals I would submit for consideration is uh, in promoting and caring for Poland's good name. I think, <clears throat> I think through academia uh, is certainly worth considering seriously. Uh, we, we should promote Polish scholarship in American academia, that's a challenge, we know that, but we know it must be done. Uh, I think if you look at the current state, the field of Polish studies, we don't, we don't have the influence or interest necessary to establish a university chair or a department of Polish studies. And I think you'll find that, you know, there are academics who research Polish topics, but uh, of course they teach, they, they generally teach less focused courses, maybe political systems, uh, international relations, general European history, that sort of uh, course. And uh, I think instead I would submit that uh, a key solution would be for the Polish government to endow a prestigious U U.S. university and establish a university chair and department of Polish studies. And uh, I would also submit that the excellent Polish scholarship and in the English language that is consistently provided through the Janusz Kurtyka Foundation, I think this will introduce very important and very a uh, very necessary Polish element, I think, into mainstream uh, intellectual debates. Uh, we at, <clears throat> at PASA EDU are also concerned about uh, caring for Poland's good name. Uh, we look at uh, threats, for example, uh, misrepresentations, the material omissions. I think these have already been uh, identified by a number of our, our uh, panel members, but um, Many of our, shall we say, the positive acts or the positive events that uh, Professor Volsha outlined, um, some of these are maybe absent in academic and public literature. And however, because of that, they, they constitute a significant material omission or they represent effectively uh, an intellectual void. Uh, let me just offer one example. You know, one of these omissions, one of these material omissions is Hitler's genocide of Poles. And uh, this is, of course, historical fact, but it's, it's virtually unknown among Americans because, you know, the scholarship on this is absent in our academic uh, literature. 
I would submit that another significant omission is, well, Hitler's kidnapping of the many thousands of Polish children for Germanization under the Lebensborn program. And I think you'll find that um, according to the UN, uh, this action is actually one of the five forms of genocide. So I, I would submit that uh, one of the things we're trying to do at PASA EDU is to address and correct these misrepresentations and omissions. And uh, we also believe that uh, an American academic platform of Polish studies uh, and also the excellent Polish scholarship that's available through the Janusz Kortyka Foundation, I think these can be significant, significant uh, contributions. Uh, let me end by stating, I think that the current state in America uh, that we have here, I think we have an exceptionally uninformed public. I think we all recognize that. Uh, and it, as also I think pointed out earlier, I think uh, the public unwittingly accepts misrepresentative narratives, the, uh, the incomplete narratives, the narratives that of course have the material omissions. And they accept these as factual. And uh, the overall result unfortunately is to, I think that Poland tends to be viewed many times in a, in a less than favorable light. So this is, um, this is what I would offer for consideration. And uh, I hope that, uh, you know, I hope that we can uh, assist you in this endeavor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for, for sharing that with all of us. Uh, it's very appreciated. Bardzo dziękuję panu profesorowi za to. I'd like to thank Professor for sharing with us his thoughts. Right, Mr. Habrowski, please. Mr. Habrowski. Na wstępie znów ja nie chcę tutaj tracić czasu na szczegóły czysto czysto techniczne. Także, as I said, there's no problem for me to speak English, of course, but uh, as, as a member of the uh, uh, Polonia or Polish uh, organization. I'm more used to uh, speaking uh, Polish than English, but uh, so I'll be by necessity, I'll be much more brief, you know, but, but the, the thing is, you know, in general, I had a really impression of our today's uh, conference, our today's meeting being more like a brainstorming how to get the uh, 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 general ideas, how to get uh, into the future of our dealings, our, uh, our uh, you know, uh, volunteer uh, participation, you know. Uh, in my opinion, the key to the success, the future success, would be uh, somehow to activate uh, the members of the uh, uh, younger generations of, of, of Polonia. Of, uh, I'm quite sure you know that the American uh, Polonia of younger generation is it's, it's a quite a big number. Uh, in Canada also we have a, quite a big number of, of uh, uh, younger members of the uh, Polonia. And uh, uh, sorry to say, but uh, my impression is younger Polonia is much less active. I can only say it, uh, of course, as a participant uh, about the Canadian Polonia, y younger Polonia in, in Canada is much less active than us or even people that were, were you know, uh, active in, in, in the generations that uh, were before us, you know. So, so basically, even our panel today, we are talking about history, we are talking about politics, but uh, I'm just trying to find the proper wording, you know, um, do you really think that uh, just by talking about politics only and history, by the way, th 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 this is one of my hobbies after, after, as the uh, amateur historian, you know, but uh, we are not, in my opinion, we are not trying to educate ourselves. We should try to educate more the uh, young generation. And uh, I have more questions than answers, actually. Do you, do you, uh, I'm directing my question to the panelists, uh, all the panelists here. Do you think this is the right way to somehow to, to, to activate younger generation of Polonia, American Polonia, European Polonia, uh, or, or Canadian Polonia, uh, only by talking about history? 
for me, this is really important. For them, uh, me dealing with a uh, with, uh, really, really young generation, uh, being a police scouting association instructor for over 15 years, uh, I know that we can get to those young minds more with the different methods, with the different priorities, not only by the, uh, you know, dwelling only about the pure, pure history or pure politics. For me, I, I can talk for, for hours, no, of course, especially in Polish, you know, but uh, for them, I don't think that would be a right or the perfect way to somehow make those uh, young minds more active. Maybe the situation in, in, in Poland is totally different. Me being a very, very old Poland, uh, I have been in Canada for uh, well over 40 years, you know, but basically, uh, I'm just directing my question to everybody else here, you know, uh, how to get to those young, younger minds, how to make them more active. And basically, like, like, like I said, uh, 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 Professor Volsha uh, speech at the beginning, uh, lecture at the beginning was, was very, very valuable, but uh, I had a kind of um, impression that uh, I was hoping that will be more more uh, exchange of ideas, exchange of uh, future ideas, how to go about it to, to uh, get young Polonia more active in the future. Thank you very much. Teraz zwrócę się do Pani Woroniki albo do Pana Pawła. Prawdopodobnie mogę jeszcze mówić w języku polskim, ale krótko mówiąc, nie wiem jak to byłoby od strony technicznej, bo z tego co słyszałem, to w języku polskim były jakieś kłopoty. Więc czy to byłyby kłopoty z tłumaczeniem na angielski, czy to byłyby kłopoty, żeby mnie ktoś, że tak powiem, rozumiał po polsku? Right, thank you, Bartłomi. We don't have much time and we are very keen on Mr. Szybowski addressing us as well. So thank you very much for your contribution. And I'm now asking Mr. Szybowski to share some thoughts. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for inviting me. I'd like to thank the Institute. I'm not going to repeat what the previous speakers said. I fully agree with what you were saying and I'll only touch upon some aspects that can be important to discuss in the future. First, language. 80 if not 90 percent of the young cannot use, and I'm very sorry to say so, they can't use the lecture of the professor here. There is this language gap and we've got to work on it. We have a school library and gallery of culture. The foundation has operated for 48 years. So the language aspect is there. We know that Janusz Kurtyka Foundation is very keen on having all those materials in English. The other aspect is that we not only focus on the events that are important for us Poles, very often these are no there is no success and to reach those young people we must find positive moments in our history not forgetting the tragic ones the battle of warsaw was one of the successes and rather than focus only on the recent history we should work on all of it because otherwise there is this huge gap in case of Americans, I mean those from the US, it's hard to identify with Poland because all you have is just fragmentary information. Another very sorrowful thing, we're talking about the defense of our good name here on the eastern shore. We had the situation with the cutting memorial and I must say that as Polonia, we didn't pass the test. Most uh, organizations supported transfer of it, also representatives of the Polish government. And here, just thanks not to the organizations, but a group of people 
gathered among the Committee for the Defense of Cutting a Monument and also Polish Cultural Foundation. We uh, protested against that in writing. If we want to obtain that effect, we must clear the environment. It can't be so that we're meeting by the monument. It's organized by the group who wanted to transfer it, and then the authorities together with the council come to that. That brings a bad message to our young people and also for the Americans. When it comes to some international institutional activity, I'd suggest, well, I believe it's also true for other countries. Americans don't respect weak people. If we are a pariah begging, this will not end well. Poland, our country has plenty to offer. We've got nothing to beg for, and we just have to respect ourselves. Speaking of other, uh, moments. The first transport of Poles to Auschwitz, 14th of June. Many organizations simply hide their heads in the sand. I don't know what is there to be ashamed of. I'd simply suggest that we act together and that we actually follow a joint plan and here the role of the foundation would be very useful as the previous speakers mentioned and for the lack of time or knowledge we cannot prepare some packages of information concerning different types of problems in the briefest of a brief, that's it. I'm sorry, I'll have to be leaving you in a moment. We'll have our Christmas Eve supper at 1 p.m. That's how we are trying to share those seeds of history. Of course, we're starting with the Polish national anthem. I'm sorry to be so chaotic, but I just want to say that we can't pretend that these problems are not there. I must just say that I met an elderly person and she had tears in her eyes and she said, Tomasz, when the PZPR was at power, you had the same people in with the council. When there was the civil platform, the same people were coming to the council and now nothing's changed. I didn't know what to tell her. Perhaps we together can have an answer and have an opportunity perhaps to do something and this meeting has really given me an opportunity to believe that we can do something thank you very much mr shabovsky i would first like to say that here in chicago illinois us we've got so many fantastic leaders and i've just been told by Mr. Nijemski that he's listening to our good symposium with considerable interest. He's somebody who has rendered huge services, but first, Wutsia Birovska Kopecz, doctor, she has just shared some thoughts with us and we'd like to return to her. I'll be very brief because we should also hear the so-called voice from the people, from the floor, from the people who observe us, who participate in this conference. I'd just like to uh, discuss ad vocem, the problem of a lack of activity of the young generation. This is a pain in Polonia organizations, but it's also a global trend. Young people don't want to do any organizational work they don't want to volunteer and we also discuss it here in chicago what to do to have the young generation activated we should probably meet at a panel with other organizations and jointly say what to do to have the younger generation interested in activity and by joining this activity that they could also try to achieve those goals of the ambassadors for the good name of Poland. That's something I would like to encourage 
and perhaps through uh, the Kurtika Foundation, we'll be able to achieve that jointly, achieve that together. Could I now ask to start tackling the questions and answers? Thank you. Right, still waiting for Daniel. I will let myself wrap up this stage of our discussion, namely, as the organizer of the meeting today and of the project, we don't have any idea to manage to create a movement or some kind of federation of organizations. We believe that the Kurtika Foundation should be the inspirer, the provider of certain logistic solutions, because I also have quite a lot of knowledge about the past of such attempts. If there was an organization that tried to be a leader, especially of the Polonia, in most cases, this didn't come to a happy ending. So reaching for those early traditions, we'd like to use this distributed system. And I believe that what's important for us is the idea, is the purpose, is the goal. And we all agree about that. We animate them and we provide this. We provide logistics as well. As Janusz Kurtyka Foundation, we perceive ourselves as providers of content of the materials of those books. We can do something more because if we uh, manage to, to do what we want to do, listening also to what you want, we'd like to launch an English speaking education portal in the next year or provide you with more lighter materials, not scientific books, but something that would be shorter, like some succinct brochures, or perhaps also more popular science. Obviously, when it comes to the subjects, we can travel the space of history because this is this specific area of the foundation. Naturally, myself and all my team also live on that situation, but we simply recognized and starting the foundation, I recognize that my purpose is not to deal with the whole world, but just in this case, we boiled it down to the question of the promotion of the past. And the past is a major problem for us due to all those falsified accounts. So to achieve a major success here would be to achieve a gigantic success if we managed to uh, do it together. So we're not going to persuade you to deal with some other uh, spaces and the seeds we're going to sow may be translated into some joint cooperation and this dynamic of changes may take place somewhere between your organizations. I'm very glad to see this uh, subject that was taken up by Jean Sakowski. About the chairs of Polish studies, I believe that Harvard wanted to have a chair of Polish studies, but we know the success of the Ukrainian chair in Harvard, which is a background for comparisons, even for comparative studies. We see how important the question that is, and here in the Kurtyka Foundation, we realize that. And we will try to further that course because we'd like to develop those reports next year. And one of them will concern 
the way of expanding that impact on the academia, but it's also about promoting Polish science in this form. All those academic outposts that would carry this banner into the world of the academia. Thank you very much for that insight. Yes, I subscribe to a point of view. Speaking of Polonia, Polish people who don't speak Polish, we translate as the foundation these books for two purposes. One is to provide Americans or Canadians with knowledge that they're non-Poles. And the other is to provide this historical information for the generation of Polonia who no longer speak Polish. There is a huge barrier and Professor Wolsha will probably confirm that there's hardly anything published in English on the latest history. We don't know why, and sometimes it is so that publications of the Institute of National Remembrance, if they're published in English, that's an internal publication and the distribution network often fails to reach to the other side of the ocean. Unless Mr. President brings it, you can buy it at Przestanek Historia. It's not like our books, which are available on Amazon and you can just one click them to your home. So we realize fully that such phenomena are there and that's why the materials we try to provide look what they look like. And we see plenty of potential in your organizations and we'd like you independently or in some kind of dialogue with all of us, with all the members of this network of the Seeds of History, that you discussed how to use the ammunition that the Foundation has provided you with. We don't know our way around it, we can't see it from Poland as well as you do, and we'll never see it this way. That's it. We know our limitations, our cognitive limitations. We may listen to you and we may be adjusting those materials and they must meet your needs the best way they can, but we won't be able to grasp this knowledge you have about your friends, Canadians, Americans, or about the needs of the young people. And of course, materials about the war and defeats are not perhaps the most inspiring. And that's true. But other than that, we'd like to enter those areas that are lighter. But the agenda of translations here is such that we must first publish the materials or books that are connected to the key issues which we find a problem today. The ones where there's plenty of false information and we want to reply to react to those first. That's my comment to your suggestions and I'd like to thank you very very warmly for those suggestions because we find them extremely extremely useful, helpful on proposing the further steps to, to cooperate and we will certainly consider those. So now the floor goes to Daniel again. Thank you very much. Thank you for this opportunity to talk. It's really something that I believe is a very useful work. I believe this is my positivism speaking. That's a if a positive attitude is that is working with the basics and it is working with the basics so i do hope that in the future our group will become larger in the future but before we conclude on this positive note i think that we can say that undoubtedly we can 
further this um, cooperation. So we have a local initiative where where Pavel, you had an opportunity uh, had, uh, in our um, in in our quarter of uh, town. You could see what we did. And um, uh, some of you have um, seen the work that we have done together with uh, Mrs. Uh, Kopic and also with uh, uh, Mr. Mirosław Mijinski from Illinois. We named the place, uh, we called it the Solidarity Triangle. And the Solidarity Triangle um, actually is a very strong reference and um, it's um, and it's in Chicago, which is the capital of the Polish diaspora in the north. And so it was the Polish downtown in the past. So in Chicago, we had not only just the downtown, but we had the Polish downtown in Chicago. So why am I mentioning that? Not only because the Polish diaspora is active uh, um, here, and also we spoke to a member of the council who last week already started um, his work. And uh, also Mrs. Miroslav Kopic and uh, Mr. Mijiski will also speak uh, to our city council and they're going to explain why it is so important but for instance it, so, to have in the english language some materials that will tell um, the story and present information in the english language so those people who uh, come uh, to this square and uh, that they could read about solidarity so that we would have more information about solidarity here in Chicago. So it's important for us to cooperate. By this, I would like to conclude. And now I would like to give the floor to Veronica. Thank you very much uh, for uh, this uh, meeting. It's been very interesting. And uh, does uh, Mr. Kortika wish to speak? Yes, just uh, I would, Mr. Uh, the, the Daniel, I just uh, remember that there was a commentary, uh, there was a commentary from uh, someone who is not a panelist. No, I have not seen any message, but I had a text message from Mr. Nijinsky, who is watching us um, as I speak and uh, he has just sent me a text message that he is listening with great interest to this great meeting. And I do hope that next time it's just the prologue, not the epilogue, as uh, um, that we will have an opportunity to listen to Mr. Mijinsky next time as he, speak, uh, as he speaks of, on behalf of the president of um, uh, the Congress of um, um, uh, uh, of Poland in the US, so just like Mir Mir Mrs. Miroska Kopacz and to Daniel, if I just may, just a few words, if I may, please, uh, with your kind permission. I know that it's quite late, but um, I, I'm going to be brief. I just wanted to uh, make a commentary on something that seems to be, uh, seems to me to be of great significance. Yes, I shall listen to you with pleasure. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, there is no need to convince the already convinced, to preach uh, to the converted. And uh, all of us who take part in this meeting, we all realize how important it is uh, to, uh, to talk about these matters. And we have our opinions already shaped about our proposal. Uh, our message should be addressed to those who are not convinced yet, or we need to address it to those who are very young. And um, they are in the beginning of their education. And if this uh, campaign is not addressed to the young generation, then it may happen that our message will be all too late and that it will reach out to someone when someone else will already master the minds of those young people. The reason I'm saying this is that um, this uh, problem of low level of knowledge is not only uh, the problem with the young Polonia that is dispersed all over the world in the US, Canada and the UK. Historical knowledge is um, uh, weak also here, is poor also here in Poland. And if we look at the uh, history lessons and they that's very much reduced history lessons right now and many times. Uh, Polish uh, students, uh, Polish pupils either do not have some basic uh, basics and do not know basics about history or what is even worse, 
in uh, the school textbooks or at uh, the history lessons, then knowledge is limited uh, to the uh, period of early Polish People's Republic. And then for many different reasons, that knowledge is no longer passed on to the next generation. So this is uh, quite a, a problem with the Polish youth dispersed all over the world, but it also the problem with the Polish youth in Poland. And as far as the methods of reaching out are concerned, and then of course, there are many different uh, ways for advocacy. And a young book will not reach, uh, will, is not the best way to reach out to young people. It's too difficult, too long, and not attractive enough. So I think that there are other forms of reaching out to the youth. And uh, for many years, I have, um, for 10 years, I have uh, been a member of the collegiate body of the Institute of National Remembrance, and uh, it controls the operations of the Institute uh, on uh, the ordinance of the uh, Polish parliament. And Karol Nowrotsky, the president, wishes to reach out to the young uh, generation with the use of the internet, because this seems to be an easy and more attractive form of reaching out to the youth. So we need to utilize new technology and um, this is something that is very much adopted by the uh, young generation. And uh, instead of uh, scientific books, depending on the age group, it could be done on the basis of comic books, movies, documentaries, competitions, exhibitions, and so on and so forth. So this is uh, something that is being practiced these days. But I'm speaking about publications in the English language, so that we need to publish things like that in the English language. And uh, what uh, may change the situation, but this is what Pablo Kurtika spoke about. If, if it is to be published in the English language, but then it stays in the warehouses in Poland, then there is no point, there is no benefit. All these publications must find their way across the pond or to the British Isles or to some other countries. And this is where the problem is. That is the problem with uh, um, actually making sure that these publications uh, are reaching out to those people who wish to read them, the, the comics books um, or some other materials or exhibitions that are being prepared in the English language, they need to reach the addressee. Because if we do not arrange for that, then you can go on with publishing thousands of books about Poland in the English language, but if no one reads them, uh, there is no point because those books will not uh, uh, reach their addressee. So this is one of the most important problems that we're dealing with, that, that is distribution and making sure that those publications reach their target audiences. And of course, the Institute of National Remembrance may ship the books uh, free of charge. And um, that is the uh, mission of the Institute after all. And uh, so please do take that into consideration. So if we can organize this type of an exchange, um, then this would be to the benefit of uh, all um, here in Poland, but also to you uh, across the pond. So it's important to share, to make sure that these publications do reach the target audience. And as far as the adult population are concerned, there are many books that are translated into the English language. That is, uh, those are the books uh, that the Institute considers to be very important. And that is a um, very uh, large scale type of operation, but many specialists and researchers, uh, Mr. Uh, Kabrowski spoke about Polish uh, Jewish relations and there are Polish Jewish uh, studies uh, published by in the English language by the Institute of National Remembrance. And um, there is um, a very well-developed discussion uh, with the people who have a different point of view on those relations. That is uh, the point of view that differs uh, from the point of view of the Institute of National Remembrance. So we're not hiding, we're picking up the subject, but we need to deal with the basics. Uh, if we speak about the young, uh, if we think about the young generation, those who no longer speak Polish or do not have good command of Polish, and they would feel much more comfortable with the literature in the English language, then of course we do have the materials, we do have uh, uh, text, but we need to think about how to reach out to those who need this type of information. And this is my appeal uh, to you. So perhaps we need to think about that in the future. That's all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, Mr. Nijinsky is here with us. 
So technically speaking, he is with us. I'm just thinking whether we can give the floor to Mr. Nijinsky. Mr. Nijinsky, please switch on your mic. Do you hear me? Please confirm. Yes, we do. Yes, we hear you. I'm the president of uh, the Congress of um, uh, American uh, uh, Polonia. I would like to thank uh, to thank you to congratulate you on this project that is the seed of history and to sow the seed in uh, North America, in the US and uh, Canada. And I see two directions of activities. So one direction of activities is education, is, uh, <clears throat> is educating the diaspora, but uh, um, another field of um, um, activities is defending the good name of Poland and um, as a representative of the Congress, that's my mission. And uh, there was this idea to perhaps uh, to have the chairs established of Polish studies at the universities. That is long-term and very expensive. A type of activity, but I spoke to Mr. Karol Nagorski from the Institute of National Remembrance, and I mentioned uh, the following proposal. There are possibilities of setting up the so-called symposia um, that is running a symposia at um, universities of renown and good repute in the US and to speak about Polish-Jewish relations during World War II. So this is something to talk about. We, as the Congress, we cooperate with the Holocaust Museum in the state of Illinois, and we cooperate with them very well. We ran two quite interesting initiatives. One of them was devoted to the memory of Jankarski, and that was a meeting a month and a half ago. And uh, last year, we also had a meeting devoted uh, a meeting devoted to Pilecki, and. Um, they are very much interested in cooperation. They could uh, sponsor uh, such symposia. Therefore, it's important uh, to provide for funding. And I know that there are people who are well connected with the US uh, uh, universities and to use that as a forum so as to change the image of polls. And I keep on meeting such situations when we are stigmatized as anti-Semites and that um, is, uh, sometimes they claim that uh, uh, together with the Germans, Poles are uh, uh, responsible for the Holocaust and um, of, of, for the Holocaust of the Jewish population. And they forget that um, uh, uh, the Poles were dying, that, uh, 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 that uh, apart from three million, uh, more than three million Jews, also three million Poles died. And so we need those symposia and there are people who can um, help with that. And if, uh, when we talk about articles in the press, then of course this reaches out uh, to a smaller group of uh, people. But if we organize a very well, uh, if we organize a symposium very well, then we can present a different point of view. Of course, that's a topic for a longer discussion. I do not wish now to delve into detail about it. But the point is that the Polish diaspora has this immense potential, but right now we're being dispersed uh, with many different uh, things like memorial uh, uh, plaques, boards, monuments. Yes, this is important. Uh, but um, it is important to, to deal with the bad image and with the lies about the polls. And we need, I think that this is what we can do in the years to come. So that's my suggestion. And in the future, would like to take part in the next panel discussion, if it is possible. And I think that there is a way for us to present our vision and our understanding what was, of what was happening during World War II after the war. And um, this may be presented. So someone said, I think it was Stalin who said uh, that a lie uh, told a hundred times becomes truth. Uh, so let us remember about that, that threat. Uh, so once again, I would like to congratulate you on the previous meeting and on this meeting. And uh, I would like to thank you very much for that. Many thanks. Thank you. And as for the symposium, here we can see a symposium on uh, Congressman Roman uh, Kuczynski and um, and it is due to Congressman. The uh, Cotton case um, had an open a case opened at the Congress of the United States of America due to um, Congressman Kuczynski and uh, speaking about Polish-Jewish relations. 
we remember him as a Polish patriot. However, for the American audience, I would like to add that he also was uh, considered to be a patriot of the state of Israel. And uh, when he spoke at the Congress of the US, he was uh, um, promoting the idea of um, um, inviting Israel to NATO. So here we can see a symposium that uh, uh, took place in Chicago a couple of years ago. So, uh, well, I know we're late. I know that we have exceeded our time. I know that we have uh, are supposed to uh, to finish. It's uh, much uh, quite late in Poland, so it is uh, over to Veronica. Thank you very much for giving me the floor. I would like to thank you very much for attending the today's meeting and I would like to thank you for taking part in our project that is the Seeds of History and um, it was a great pleasure for me to uh, be in touch with you. I've learned so much, I've received so much information from you and I do hope that this is a beginning of very fruitful cooperation. I do encourage all of you to follow our uh, social media. Uh, the video material, the video recording of the meeting of, of, with, the, of, with the historians and uh, of this meeting will be made available both in the Polish and English languages very soon. Thank you very much and goodbye. Thank you very much for a kind invitation. Many thanks. Thank you very much for taking part in this meeting and in this debate. Thank you very much. Goodbye.